using the first and second derivative tests, find all relative maxima and minima of function f of x equal to x squared minus six x to the four thirds. First derivative test, what does that say? So suppose x zero is a critical point of f, that means the derivative of f is zero or undefined. We're gonna check the behavior of the derivative on each side of x zero. If the sign on the derivative goes from positive to negative, x zero will be a relative maximum. If it goes from negative to positive, x zero will be a relative minimum. If the sign stays the same, then we'll have neither. Okay, let's take our derivative and look for critical points. So what are we gonna have? We're gonna have two x minus, okay, I'm gonna have six, we'll bring the exponent down, that's four thirds, that's gonna to turn to an eight, then we subtract one off the exponent. So I'm gonna have two x minus eight times x to the one third. So I can factor out an x to the one third and a two. It's gonna leave me with x to the two thirds minus four. So one of our zeros is gonna be at x equals zero. To get my other, we're gonna cube four. Okay, we move the four to the other side when we set it equal to zero. So cubing four is gonna give me 64. We have x squared equals 64. So the solutions there will be x equal to plus or minus eight. So don't forget the negative solution. Now that I have our critical points, we take our domain, it's all real numbers, we're gonna carve up our domain by marking off at our critical points. So that'll be zero and then plus minus eight. We're gonna check a point in each region. If I check and I get a positive, the whole region will be positive. If I check at a point, I get a negative, whole region's negative. So we're gonna put four points into our derivative and check their signs. Points for each region, we'll take minus 10, minus one, one, and 10. What happens when I put minus 10 into the derivative? Well, put it into the factored form. We have two, cube root of a negative number is negative. And then if I put minus 10 into x to the 2 thirds, we square it first, gives me 100. Cube root, I go to my calculator, I get about 4.6. So that's a positive. So the sign on this thing here is gonna be a negative number. Now, that means I only care about the sign, I mark it off as a negative. Okay, if we want to go a little bit further, we could say that the region's a region of decreasing. Next, let's try minus one. Minus one, I have two, cube root of minus one is minus one, minus one to the two thirds power, minus one squared is one, so I'm looking at cube root of one, that's just one, minus four gives me a minus three. So I have positive, negative, negative, gives me a positive. So we note, as I go from the region from minus 10 to the region to minus one, okay, we're crossing a critical point at minus eight. We're gonna have negative to positive, so that means relative minimum. All right, we can check at one and 10, and then we'll note, we'll go from positive to negative, and then negative to positive. So at zero, we'll have a relative max, and then at eight, we'll have another relative minimum. Okay, if we check on the graph, okay, so this isn't to scale, but it's enough to give us an idea of what's happening. Relative minimum, relative maximum, and then another relative minimum. Okay, second derivative test. So we take the derivative of our first derivative. We're gonna do, x zero is gonna be a critical point. I apply our second derivative to x zero. If the number that comes out is positive, okay, we're gonna be concave up, so that's gonna be a local minimum. If it's negative, we'll concave down. It's gonna be a local maximum. And then if I get zero or undefined, well, the test just says you can't say anything, you need to do more work, probably using the first derivative test. So let's take a look. Take our second derivative. So what's that gonna give us? We're gonna get two minus eight thirds x to the minus two thirds. If I don't wanna work with that, I'm gonna to multiply top and bottom by three times x to the two thirds. That takes out the negative exponent. So we see here where the points of interest, 
Okay, we'll note, let's take a look. Where are our critical points? Critical points are at zero and plus minus eight. So we're gonna stick them into this quotient here. So that's gonna give us, at zero, will be undefined. So the answer there is inconclusive. Okay, that doesn't mean it's not a relative minimum, not a relative maximum. It just says second derivative test is no help. You'll need to do more work. Okay, from the first derivative test, we notice at zero, we had a relative max. So the first derivative test is the work that you need to do there. If I check plus or minus eight, I'll note I can do them both at once because we have x to the two-thirds means you can square first. So what are we gonna do? If I take x to the two-thirds, I put eight or minus eight in there, you're gonna get minus two or two, and then you square, it's gonna give you a four. So what's gonna happen? We're looking at six times four minus eight. Okay, six times four is 24. Take off eight, you get 16. Whatever's in the bottom's positive. So the second derivative at plus or minus eight is gonna be a positive number. That means we're concave up. So the plus and minus eight are gonna be local minimums. We check our graph and that agrees with what we got from our first derivative test.